In a shocking move, the White House overruled the CDC in extending the no sale order into next year. We have this and much more cruise news from all the big cruise lines, so stay tuned. Well, ahoy there, cruisers. Welcome to this week's Cruise News Roundup. If you're new to the channel, if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button right now. It's free, so why not give it a go? So in that headline news, the CDC have extended the no sale order until October the 31st. This doesn't really affect many cruise lines as they had already cancelled cruising till November or later anyway. But it could have been much worse if the CDC had got their own way. The CDC director wanted it extended until at least the 15th of February 2021. At a task force meeting this week, Dr Robert R Redfield, the director of the CDC, had recommended the extension and was worried that cruise ships could become viral hotspots, as they did at the beginning of the pandemic. But the plan to cancel cruising till at least February from the States was overruled by the White House, according to a senior federal health official who was not authorised to comment and so spoke on the condition of anonymity. The administration will instead allow ships to sail after October the 31st, the date the industry has already agreed to on its own. As you know, most cruise lines have already agreed to a voluntary suspension on cruising until November with the Cruise Line International Association, more commonly known as CLIA. And what's shocking is all of this was announced two hours before the current no sale order was due to expire. Talk about last minute. Oh my gosh, yeah, down to the wire, wasn't it? The CDC under Dr. Redfield's leadership has received harsh criticism from scientists for its handling of the pandemic, beginning with the botched rollout of testing kits last spring. If it had been pushed back till next year, it would wreak havoc on an already suffering industry, especially in Florida, where they rely on cruise ships so much with all of the different ports there. But it really angers us, to be honest. The CDC have allowed flights to go ahead fully booked. You are basically allowed to sit three inches from a complete stranger for four hours or longer on a domestic flight. It makes no sense at all, with no testing or anything. It's a direct contradiction to the things that have been required from cruise lines. You're allowed to go in all hotels and vacation spots, they're all allowed to be opened. And they've even allowed theme parks to be open. For example, Walt Disney World, it's no different to a cruise really. You check into the busy hotel, spend a day at the parks in the resort, mixing with hundreds if not thousands of different people, and then you eat in the resort, sleep in there, and so on. But again, Cruise has been the one who have been penalised. It really isn't fair. Yeah, and even the way their language, the way they said that cruise was a hot spot for the virus, as if that was the place the virus was coming from, the language there is like what we've been hearing from the media of really demonising cruise into being the one that is to blame for this virus. Yes, the CDC are just placing all the blame onto cruise because they're the only industry, we've said it so many times, that actually give the figures of the amount of people who had coronavirus. The CDC have absolutely no idea how many people spread on flights, in hotels, in resorts, anywhere but cruise. I mean, at universities, in the UK, we're having a big issue with students going into halls of residence and they're becoming hotspots. So isn't that just the same thing? Yeah, the whole thing is becoming completely ridiculous now. It's becoming to be a bit a bit of a joke, isn't it? It is. And we're not we're not under the impression that cruise is totally exempt from this. We know that they have got big challenges ahead, but the cruise lines know that as well. And they have been proactive and cautious with their return to service. Just look at what's happening in Europe with the two cruise lines over here. They have put lots and lots of measures in place to return to cruise as safe as possible. And they're working. MSC has been cruising for three or four weeks now with absolutely zero incidences. When there's obviously incidences already going on in Italy, there hasn't been any on the ship, so it makes no sense to us. They're going to kill off an industry if they're not careful. There is only so long that cruise lines can last through this. We are starting to become very worried. Yeah, and it's not just the cruise lines. We've said this before. It's everything associated to cruise. Cruise lines prop up economies all around the world. Just here at home, cities like Southampton rely on cruise and cruiser passengers to fill their hotels, to employ people in the area. It's going to have big knock-on effects. So in other news, Royal Caribbean have extended the popular Cruise with Confidence scheme through November the 30th, 2020 for all sailings departing through April 2022. 
The Cruise with Confidence program allows you to make last minute changes before your cruise is due to depart. You can choose to change the date or receive a future cruise credit up to 48 hours before your cruise. They are also now offering a best price guarantee, which is also valid up to 48 hours prior to your sailing, assuring that you get the best possible rate. What it means is that if the price of your cruise does drop, you can request a rate adjust adjustment if the price does drop before the final payment due date. If it's after the final payment due date and up to 48 hours before you sail, you will receive a non-refundable onboard credit to be spent on your next cruise. So make sure you keep an eye out on those prices if you have booked and contact Royal Caribbean to get that extra money. Yeah, it's good that they're doing as much as they can to entice people back to cruise and make people a little bit more confident. I think we're going to have to see more cruise lines adopt this approach just to reassure people. Virgin Voyages has cancelled all of its scheduled November cruises, so they are now planning to resume sailing in December 2020. It's been a harsh start for the cruise line, who so far have not been able to launch at all. The ship is currently in cold layup at the port of Genoa in Italy. The second ship, the Valiant Lady, is receiving her finishing touches in the Genoa shipyard too. We got to stay on the Scarlet Lady for a few nights in February and we were super impressed. She's definitely worth waiting for. Why not check out our video which we'll put a link in the corner of the screen right now. Yeah, it's a really exciting ship, guys. You've really got to see it for yourself. We're super excited to see her sailing where she's supposed to in the Caribbean. So yeah, it's a, such a shame for them because they've tried launching about five times now. It's oh, the worst moment they could have possibly chosen in the whole history of cruising. And after months of delays due to the knock-on effect of COVID in the shipyards, Princess Cruises have finally taken delivery of its brand new Royal Clash cruise ship, the Enchanted Princess. Enchanted Princess is actually the 100th cruise ship to be built by Italian shipbuilder Fincanteri. She will have many of the same features of sister ship Sky Princess, so she sure is going to be a big winner. We had an absolutely incredible cruise on Sky Princess last year. She really is a, a stunning ship, so we can't wait to get on board um, Enchanted. Yeah, definitely. We'd love to be on Enchanted. Once again, if you want to check out that Sky Princess video, we'll pop a link in the corner. In other Princess news, the cruise line has announced that two ships will be leaving the fleet. The older Sun Class ships, which consist of the Sea Princess and the Sun Princess, have now been sold off. They were both vital in bringing premium cruising experiences to Australia and growing the cruising sector down under. We don't know if they'll be going to another cruise line or they're just going to be scrapped. Several sources have claimed that the Peace Boat Organisation, which focuses on promoting peace, human rights and sustainability, have acquired the Sun Princess for $170 million, but it's yet to be confirmed. As a result, all cruises have been cancelled on the two ships. Next up, one of the first cruise lines to resume sailing, TUI Cruises, based in Germany, have had a scare this week. On Monday, Greek authorities reported that a dozen crew members had tested positive for the virus, which is obviously terrible news as the world is watching very closely the first cruise lines to resume sailing. But in a good turn of events, by Tuesday afternoon, the crew members who had tested positive had been retested three more times with each test coming back negative. Two were done on land and one was done on the ship. So TUI Cruises have then issued a statement announcing that Greek authorities confirmed that there are no virus cases aboard the ship and the voyage can proceed as planned. We are all breathing a big sigh of relief after the multiple retests found no trace of the virus on board the Mine Sheaf 6 cruise ship. Obviously, the media were very, very quick to pounce on the story, posting clickbait headlines, making it look like a terror story. And so far, they've been very slow to correct the story that nobody on board actually had coronavirus. Typical. But does that just go to show how unreliable the COVID test can be? It's really unclear how these 12 false positives were found. That's a lot. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, that is crazy. Carnival Cruise Line have also announced earlier today that they will be cancelling most of its 2020 sailings. The only exceptions are ships sailing out of Port Miami and Port Canaveral in Florida. This is disappointing, but not entirely unexpected, as we were expecting a slow start when cruising does resume to test out the new procedures and prove that they actually work. Finally, in some great news, Carnival Cruise Line's new ship, the Carnival Mardi Gras, is out to sea completing her first set of sea trials. 
The 180,000 ton mega ship has left the Meotoku shipyard in Finland. This is a major step into her being introduced into service. It's great to see even through this pandemic that the ships are still been finished and delivered. The sea trials will test all parts of the ship, including the engines, maneuverability and emergency procedures. The ship features a few firsts at sea, including a roller coaster on the top deck. Whatever next? The Mardi Gras is due to be delivered in February 2021. So wow, what an interesting week for news there, especially with the White House overruling the CDC. We would love to know what you feel about this. Please let us know in the comment section below. And please do consider subscribing. We've got so much fantastic content on the way and it really does help us. So go on, hit that subscribe button right now. And a big thank you to all of our patrons for supporting us. If you'd like to support us or if you'd like to find out more about Patreon, click the link in the description section below. The cruise captains of the week this week are the Travelling Garrets. So ahoy there, Hi there guys. Hi Travelling Garrets. That's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising. cruising.